All right, so the lead generation model, very important foundationary model, very, very important uh, leads, listings and leverage. So it all starts with leads. How are we hammering leads to get listings that will then provide us with leverage? So here's lead generation in a nutshell. You have three jobs as a real estate agent. You have three of them. The first job is lead generation. The second job is business development or lead follow-up. And your third job is actually transacting real estate. <clears throat> now, if you know our company, you know that you have the resources, training, support, leadership team, and everything in between that puts you in a position that when you, when you get a deal, we will help you get it done. Don't worry. You've got me, our broker, the rest of our leadership team. Everybody's here to help you get that deal done. If you're new and you, you got a you got a deal uh, under contract and you feel like a, a dog chase in a car, you caught it and you don't know what to do with it. Um, don't worry, we will help you get through. The things that are hard for us to do with you or for you are the first two. And that's why they're the most important parts of your job, lead generation and lead follow-up. Remember I gave you those five things, lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments, negotiating contracts and getting educated. Number one and number two are right there. And if you don't do those, you'll never do any business. So when it comes to lead generation, it's important to understand that we are going to be prospecting based and marketing enhanced. Remember my story about the purple realtor, right? Uh, that person is all in on marketing, not in a prospecting at all. If we're going to lead with revenue in our business, we're going to be prospecting based. Now prospecting is time intensive. It is proactive. We are going out prospecting, right? And then finally, it gets you immediate results. If you call 100 FISBOs, you will have a listing by the end of the day. You will. Marketing is money intensive, right? Costs a lot of money to market. It's also passive. You're not doing anything. You're putting things out in the universe and hoping somebody comes home. There are long-term results involved with that, right? To grow a big business, you can't just do it with the people you know. You got to get into a relationship with people you don't know. So long-term results from a marketing standpoint, uh, immediate results from a prospecting standpoint. I want to clarify uh, or solidify or crystallize this concept. Uh, is, is calling FISBOs prospecting or marketing? Put it in the chat. We're going to do a few of these to stay in your chat. That's right. It's prospecting. Calling FISBOs is prospecting. If you go to the PTA and you advertise in the newsletter, is that prospecting or marketing? Right? You uh, market it, you put an ad in Currents, or you put an ad in the, uh, you know, the Clevelander. That's all marketing. Walking around door knocking in a geographic area that you want to be the agent for, is that prospecting or marketing? Mm-hmm, that is prospecting. And then finally is direct mail, mailing something to newly married couples. Is that prospecting or marketing? Marketing, marketing, marketing. All right, good job, guys, you nailed it. Here's, here's, the, here's the whole breakdown. And if you go to page, uh, you go to page uh, 24 in the packet, that is gonna have, all the things that you can do to prospect. Sorry, Veronica, you uh, have something to say? Yeah, um, so this is all very new to me. Can yeah. you explain to me like the difference between prospecting and marketing? Because at first I was going to say calling people was kind of like marketing because, I mean... You're kind yeah, of I mean, actually here. Yourself, let's let's so just. I'm a little confused on it. Yeah, let's look through some of these examples, right? So prospecting is where you are getting on the phone or going face to face uh, with people for specific reasons, right? You're calling for sale by owners, asking them to tour the house and have a conversation about being their listing agent. You're calling expired listings and saying, "Hey, the last realtor didn't get it done. I think I can." 
you're calling people and you're saying, and that you're, this is called circle prospecting. You call people in the neighborhood where you just sold or just listed and you say, Hey, I just sold a house in your neighborhood. Hey, I just listed a house in your neighborhood. You call past clients and you ask for referrals, right? You go around door knocking, you get in a relationship with people that are renters and turn them into first time home buyers. That's all prospecting because it's very activity based. It's very time intensive, but you get results right now, right? I promise you that if you go advertise in a newspaper or put a bumper sticker on your car that says, call me, I'm your realtor, um, no one may ever call or somebody's going to have to see it thousands of times before they're like, oh yeah, Veronica's a realtor, right? Whereas the prospecting is in your face right now, they know, and you're asking them to make a decision. Marketing is going to be you know passive you're not doing anything you're just paying for it and hoping it spurs people into action when the time comes so we want to be prospecting based we want to be in activity we want to be doing things we don't just want to take a big pile of money and push it out into a marketing budget and then hope that it brings us business there's a time and a place for marketing it's just it, you know it's not until the later stages um of the uh of the growth of your business. And it, Rebecca nailed it. Prospecting is asking for business right now. Marketing is saying, when you're ready to do business, call me. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, that helps. Yeah. Okay, great. And then there are things that are both like geographic uh, and demographic farming, postcard campaigns, you know, those things can fall into both. It's mostly marketing, but there's some prospecting involved because you can get some now business um so just keep keep that in mind but these are all these are all the things that you can do right so either look at the page uh 24 in your book screenshot this do whatever you got to do um but like when you're like i don't know how to go get business right well here's how you do it you got to do one of these things because there's no there isn't a yellow pages anymore and there isn't a section for realtors in there even if there was right so like nobody is going on the state's website and looking you up because you got a license. You got to go out there and tell people you're in the business of real estate. Really important thing, and this goes back to our Pareto principle, is understanding where your leads and where your business come from. So 82% of your business on average on, for real estate agents is going to come from their top four lead sources. That's usually going to be your sphere of influence, past clients, um, FISBOs and expireds. I mean, that's the top four for most people. Some people have lead generation services. Some people, uh, you know, will work with Zillow or Realtor.com, and they generate a lot of business that way. That's expensive, right? But it can't. It, it is some people's top. Your top four should be. Uh, sphere and past clients should be number one and number two. And if you don't have any past clients, the easiest way to get past clients is go prospect for now clients. And then they'll become your past clients and they'll refer you business. And then the other two are uh, the, the two that are the top for most new agents are FISBOs and expires for sale by owner and expires. And I mean, you know, if you're Rudy Jones, you've been in the business for several years, you're still a FISBO killer. I know you are Rudy. So again, know your numbers. If you are in the business, look back at every deal that you did last year and say, where did I get that lead or how did I know that person? And you'll see, okay, sphere, sphere, referral, 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 past client, referral, past client, sphere, FISBO, expired, FISBO. And then you'll say, and you count them all up. Here's where the business comes from. When it comes to lead generation, Right. It's important to understand page 26 in your books. Here's how that uh, business all comes together. Lead generation is capturing somebody's contact information, their name, phone number, email address and where they live. Don't worry about asking people where they live and feeling weird. You're a realtor. You should know where people live. It's weird if you don't. So a lead is, uh, Latanya, how do you find FISBOs and expireds? Uh, yes, you can find expireds on the MLS, or you can email frontdesk297 at kw.com and ask Sierra to add you to the, um, add you to our weekly email of all the, all the expireds on the MLS, and you can call down that. 
I see Rudy clapping, right? Rudy, you on that? Mm-hmm. Front desk 297, please add me to the weekly FISBO and expired emails. All right, so capturing somebody's information, name, phone number, email, home address, that's a lead, right? And they come into your database. You have to have a database. If you're with KW, which all of you are, you have access to KW Command. It is an incredibly powerful database system that actually ties into everything else that you'll do in real estate. But you want to get their information in there and then consistently be communicating with them and contacting them. And then as when you have a two-way conversation with them about real estate, they become a contact, which means the relationship's stronger. They've had some indication that they're interested in being a part of your uh, you know, they're interested in your services. And then whenever they, uh, then they uh, raise their hand and, and say that they want to buy, we're preparing those from conversion, from contacts to clients, right? When they sign the paperwork, they become a client. We then crush that business, get them closed. They become a repeat and referral partner and go back into our contacts bucket, right? So you have a bucket of leads, you have a bucket of contacts, you have a bucket of active clients. When those clients close, they go back into the contacts. But this, these are your three jobs, guys. Lead generation, relationship management or business development or lead follow-up. And then finally, uh, doing and transacting the business and uh, getting referrals. That's, uh, this is on page 26 in your book. All right, so set up your database and feed it, right? So make sure that you are everybody you know and everybody that knows you is in, a, is in your command database. And you know if you have a pre-existing or already having two-way communication with them, they're a contact. If you, have, uh, if you don't, you just have their name, phone number, email, they gave you a business card, something like that, that's fine, they're just a lead. So, Again, working off of the data provided from the interviews with hundreds of millionaire real estate agents, we are uh, we know that to get a lead to convert to a contact, we need to do not, there's 19 touches that have to take place, right? 19 touches that have to take place to convert somebody from somebody you don't know to somebody that you do know. These are averages. Somebody might raise their hand right out of the gate. Other people might take 38, right? But it's average. And that's either going to be uh, the only two things you can control from a communication standpoint are frequency and intensity, right? So, you, you know, for the contacts in your database, you want to get 36 touches in a year. 36 touches in a year is three a month, right? You want them to be phone calls, emails, events, and then some direct marketing, right? All of those are balanced. Look at the top, right? The prospecting is happening for 30 of the touches, 32 if you count the events and the marketing is you know quarterly at best. Here's the thing, everybody who's got a career in real estate who's less than three years in the business very likely came from another industry. All of the people in your life have a deeply worn groove in their brain because we are not emotional, we are not logical, we are pattern based creatures and the pattern in everyone's brain is that Rebecca's a nurse, right? or that Polly worked for a nonprofit, or that Mike's a retail guy, or whatever it is. That's the groove in their brain. And so what we're doing when we touch them 36 times a year, once every 10 days, some more aggressive or intense than others, some more passive than others, we're saying, hey, I need to do a pattern interrupt. I need you to know that I'm a realtor. I need you to know that I'm a realtor, right? And no one's getting offended by this. If you don't do it, you're going to see people that already know, like, and trust you and would love to work with you, go work with somebody else because they forget that you're a realtor. Nuclear medicine technologist, sorry, I, you know, something, you know, something in the medical field, sorry. Uh, but here's the thing. If you're not willing to do that pattern interrupt, you're willing to let those people go work with somebody else. And look, some people's grooves are worn deeper. I always make the joke, if you called my mother right now and you asked her where I work, she would either get Keller or Williams, but she would not get both. Because in her mind, I'm all these other things over the years and the grooves are too deeply worn. And she'll say, I don't, you know, he works for a real estate company, Keller something, or, you know, Michael Williams or whatever. She would get it wrong, right? And that's my mother. 
She cares deeply about me, I think, I hope. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's our job to make sure that our friends and family and, and, and contacts and people that already know, like, and trust us, that they know that we're a realtor, right? And it's, and it, and it's not just calling them saying, hey, do you know anybody who wants to buy a house? Hey, you know, it's, it's a consistent methodical plan. And that plan will allow you to execute consistently with a, the right degree of frequency. So this is the database model. When leads come in, we're communicating to them. When contacts exist in our database, we're communicating to them until which time we can have a solidifying event. Sorry. Oh, shoot. What am I doing? No. Accidentally stop screen sharing. You can have a solidifying event to submit a lead into a contact or a contact into a client. And that's how the database works. If you don't have any names in your database, you're not putting leads in your database, you are hoping that everybody that comes to you as a lead is trying to buy within the next 30 to 90 days. Because I promise you, if you don't have a system for putting them in your database and communicating to them with frequency and intensity, you will not do any other business than now business, which means your business will be limited to what you can do today, not amassed over what you've done for your entire career to bring people through the funnel. So with that being said, the exercise that you want is on page 29, which is to take a few minutes. We're going to take a few minutes right now, and we're going to say, what are we going to do in January, February, March, April? You know, there, you should have call your database every month. You want to be calling people every month, every day. You know, talk to five people a day. It's 25 people a week. It's 100 people a, a, a month. It's 300 people a a quarter, 300 people a quarter probably generates somewhere, uh, you know, somewhere between, um, you know, uh, well, we're actually, I think we're going to work through the model. So I won't, I won't, I won't spill the beans, but you know, you want to go through this exercise to make sure that you, you are uh, taking advantage of the, uh, you know, the ability to be planful in January, talk about the new year in February, talk about Valentine's day. And, uh, in March, talk about March Madness or St. Patrick's Day. In April, talk about the spring market. In May, talk about Memorial Day. In June, talk about summer vacations. In July, talk about Independence Day. In August, talk about back to school. In September, talk about Labor Day and fall on the horizon. In October, talk about last chances in the market. In November, be thankful. December, celebrate winter holidays, right? Like there's your marketing campaign. You just actually have to do stuff. Also, as you generate more leads, just make sure you're following the uh, Telephone Consumer Protection Act. Don't call people that are on the do not call list. They're on the do not call list so, so that you do not call them. All right, so the database numbers game, right? Here's the thing, and this is all statistically proven across the millionaire real estate agents, and this is page 31 in your books, number one in your hearts. Um, the number of people you have in your database that you are communicating to on a consistent basis with a 13 touch or 36 touch uh, program, 6% of them are gonna have, statistically speaking, based on the number of people in the United States that move each year divided by the number of people who live in the United States that are of home owning age, 6% of them are gonna have a real estate need to buy, sell, or invest in real estate. Now, because of the number of the realtors in the market and because some of the people in your database you don't have as good a relationship with as you might like to have or you think you have, the conversion rate on the people in your database that you're communicating to with frequency and intensity is 50%, right? There's 15,000 realtors in the MLS. There's only 60,000 homes that are going to sell in our market this year. You do the math. You want to sell more than four houses, you got to do better than average. Now, your conversion rate here could be higher. And it could be lower. You just have to know based on the quality of the people in your database. But the point is, for every 250 people in your database, you can do eight deals. 250 people in your database is worth eight deals if you're communicating with frequency and intensity. So if you wanted to do your deals solely and wholly based off your database, you can work backwards. How many units do I want to do? Divide it by 0.6, divide that by 0.5, and that gives you the number of contacts that you need to have in your database. 
So go back to the economic model that you did where it says that you need to do 15 or 25 or 45 units. Put that uh, on the paper, divide it by 0 0.06, divide that by 0 0.5. That's the number of contacts you need to have in your database. If you don't have that number, you can grow to that number or you can find things outside of database to create, uh, to go find that business. It might be referral partners. It might be uh, buying leads. It might be, uh, you know, you get them from your Rainmaker. Whatever it is, there's a gap between the number of names you have in your database and the number of names that you need. But here, how's this? If you've got a thousand people in your database that you're communicating with, with frequency and intensity, and that includes four phone calls a year uh, to every person in your database to say, hi, I'm your realtor. I just want to check and see how you're doing. Do you know what's going on in the market? Do you know what's going on with interest rates? Do you know how many houses are on the market? Do you know what your home is worth? Would you like to know what your home is worth? Any of those things. For every 250 people, it's eight deals, right? Now we saw before that on uh, an average person that wants to make $100,000 a year needs to do 30 deals. So with a thousand people in your database, you can do 32. You do 32 deals a year, you're going to make $100,000. That means every, every name in your database is worth $100. Think about that. Every name you put in your database is worth $100 dollars at some point in the next year. Jeez, oh man, as Eddie Golden would say, geez, oh man, geez, oh Pete's. How crazy is that? If I put 250 people in my database in the next year, that's $25,000 income in the next year. That's insane. We start to think about it like that. Now think about this. You got to make four phone calls a year to every person in your database. So if every person in my database is worth $100 and I got to call them four times a year, I get paid $25 every time I call somebody. $25 every time you call somebody, guys. How much money do you want to make? It's up to you. I know we're moving and grooving here, and I know that that was a lot, but it was important. Tell me, what are your ahas? What are your ahas? What do we need to revisit? Polly? I have an aha. Um, I, I talk to a lot of people. I make a lot of calls, but I forget to ask questions. Sometimes my conversations are just fun and light and I hang up and I don't even ask a question. Yeah. So, so this is on my desk. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know. But on a sticky note, I just write, and it's got marks all over it because it's old. Ask everyone, who do you know that wants or is ready to buy, sell, invest? So that is right next to my computer screen. So I remember to fit it in because I don't. I talk to a lot of people. Like, how dare I forget? So I have reminders at my desk just to help. Yeah. I mean, because it's so easy to spend a day having really good conversations and not asking anybody, who do you know who? Who do you know? And, and, and guys, it is a really important part of neurolinguistical programming to say, who do you know who, instead of, do you know anyone who? Do you know anyone who is a yes or no question. It's a closed question. When you ask, do you know someone who, people's initial reaction is to say no because it's, they'd have to labor to go find that person. But when you say, who do you know who, you're asking them to very gently go into their Rolodex and think about who they know who. Great one. Uh, Rebecca says that if we aren't putting people in our database, we're only doing now business. And Rudy Jones says, we have to strengthen the relationship. All right, guys, it is 1129. We're going to come back at 1134 on the button. I'm going to play one song. I'm going to get a coffee. And then we are going to rock out our last two models. <laughs> 